Here's your wrestling news for May 4th, 2023. And we're kicking off today with AEW as Double or Nothing is coming later this month and the odds aren't in favor of MJF. Prior to this week's Dynamite, things were looking rosy for the champ as after he helped Sammy Guevara become the number one contender, the plan was for MJF to pay off the Spanish God and get an easy win. On this week's Dynamite though, Guevara and MJF teamed up with the two losing to Darby Allin and Jungle Boy Jack Perry, who by winning, have now added their names to the title match. Not only will this be a fatal four-way match for the title at Double or Nothing, but it'll also be the first fatal four-way match for the AEW title in the company's four-year history. In fact, this will only be the second time ever that the AEW title will be on the line but not in a singles match after Kenny Omega retained the gold against Pac and Orange Cassidy at Double or Nothing 2021. Double or Nothing will air the same night as NXT Battleground, the first time that two major companies have held competing major events since WrestleMania 5 and WCW Clash of the Champions 6 in 1989, and who are you rooting for in this historic title match? Last month, AEW aired the final episode of Dark Elevation, but this isn't the only piece of All Elite programming that is finished. As fans who tuned in to YouTube this week discovered, AEW Dark is also a thing of the past, and why exactly has Tony Khan cut his two YouTube shows? Andrew Zarian reports that the decision to nix Dark and Dark Elevation is all in preparation of AEW's upcoming Saturday wrestling show, Collision, which is expected to premiere this June. Part of the deal with Warner Brothers Discovery is that AEW wrestling content will exclusively air on their networks, so while AEW can still post clips to its YouTube channel, full shows are off limits. The report added that this exclusive programming won't affect Ring of Honor, which will continue to air on Honor Club, and Zaria notes that Dark and Dark Elevation are over for the time being. AEW has a lot of big plans for Collision, which will reportedly heavily feature CM Punk. And if getting the show aired means the end of the two YouTube shows, that's a sacrifice Tony Khan is willing to make. During last week's Raw, Triple H revealed the new World Heavyweight Championship, WWE's answer to Roman Reigns defending the undisputed WWE Universal title sporadically on TV. As soon as fans caught glimpse of the new title, they immediately recognized that its design was inspired by the classic big gold belt, but there's much more to the new gold than what fans first saw. On WWE's The Bump, Matt Camp gave a rundown of the hidden details on the new title, including the use of three lions on the center plate, which denotes the McMahon family crest. If you look near the top of the title, you'll find an eagle, which was used on all WWE championships until 2013, and a crown at the very top is a tribute to the first WWF title held by Bruno Sammartino. 60 diamonds on the new championship represent the 60 years that have passed since the WWE Championship was founded, and what do you make to this title design? Sound off in the comments below. As far as the new champion is concerned, little is known about that, but we do know that the new champion will be crowned at Night of Champions. We also know that the title will be part of Raw, meaning it's almost certain a Raw superstar will win in Jeddah, and now Cody Rhodes has thrown his name into the race. Speaking to Comic Book Nation this week, Rhodes was asked about the new championship and admitted that he is interested in standing tall later this month. He said, It's definitely something that piqued my interest. That's the title that represents Raw. That's the title that main events Raw. That's the title that is the franchise title for the USA Network. I can't say that I don't want it. I can't say that's not something that, if you look and revise your goals and say, this is the route we have to go. While Cody is interested in the gold, many have said that him winning so soon after losing to Roman Reigns would be a terrible call and make the World Heavyweight title seem like a consolation prize. When Rhodes returned to WWE, he did so to become WWE Champion, the title his father Dusty never officially won. And do you think him becoming World Heavyweight Champion would be the wrong call? Or is it an accolade worthy of the American Nightmare? As we all know, injuries in wrestling can happen at any time, and typically, a wrestler will share a photo of their injury online to show just how dangerous this sport can be. It was earlier this week that Indy Hartwell shared some photos of her ankle injury, as she suffered the injury during the NXT Spring Break-In event, but that won't be the case anymore. On Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez explained that WWE has a new rule prohibiting talent from sharing photos of their injuries, especially if the image shows any blood at all. 
Alvarez suggested that WWE doesn't want injuries to be glorified in the form of merch, which is ironic given that WWE released a new Finn Balor shirt after he received 14 staples in his head following WrestleMania 39. It's possible that this merch reasoning is due to AEW, as a recent shirt featuring Britt Baker with a black eye has drummed up controversy, with some saying it alludes to domestic violence. It's worth stressing that this black eye was not caused by Baker's partner Adam Cole, as both she and Soraya have defended the shirt, but don't expect injuries to be documented online by WWE's roster. This weekend, WWE will host their Backlash Premium Live event in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the first major event for WWE in the area since New Year's Revolution 2005. This will be a huge show for WWE, even without Roman Reigns being involved, and the company had already made a fortune on the show before a single ticket was sold. That's according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, who reports that Puerto Rico have paid WWE $1.5 million with the Rico Convention Center District Authority, or PRCDA, and the Puerto Rico Tourism Company are paying the sum. With or without the Tribal Chief, WWE wants to show that Puerto Rico was right to give them the $1.5 million, and we'll have to see if the Caribbean Islands investment was worth it. Part of the attraction of Backlash will be seeing Bad Bunny face Damian Priest in the first singles match for the Grammy Award winner. Despite being allies at WrestleMania 31, the two are now fierce enemies, and Priest will make sure Bunny knows what it's like to be a WWE superstar. Speaking on the bump, albeit slightly in character, Priest said he will treat Bunny just like any other wrestler, and it'll be up to the rapper to keep up. The Judgment Day member added that he expects Bunny to have all the fans on his side this weekend, but reminded those watching the bump that wrestling is what he does for a living. Backlash 2023 will be a big night for the Judgment Day, with SmackDown Women's Champion Rhea Ripley defending against Selena Vega. And who do you expect to win in the Priest vs. Bunny match? Last month, Sherry Lynn Guerrero dropped some shocking and concerning allegations, claiming that she had been sexually assaulted by her stepfather, Chris Benson, and that her mother, Vicky Guerrero, defended her husband. In a scathing response, Vicky said that Sherry Lynn was being ungrateful to her stepfather for buying her a car, and now there's been another troubling update from the Guerrero family. Speaking to WrestleBinge, Chavo Guerrero revealed that he is no longer on speaking terms with his Aunt Vicky, especially after everything that has transpired between her and Sherry Lynn. Chavo has previously said that he 100% believes his cousin's accusation against Benson, and Sherry Lynn's sister Shaw, known to WWE fans as Raquel Diaz, has said that the incident did happen. This is a difficult time for the Guerrero family, and while we hope that the two sides will be able to reconcile one day, Chavo and Vicky aren't on speaking terms for the time being. It's safe to say that Roman Reigns will go down in history as one of the most dominant superstars of all time, especially as he closes in on 1,000 days as Universal Champion. Since his transformation into the Tribal Chief, Reigns has yet to be pinned or submitted, but his streak of dominance goes far beyond his latest character. On Twitter, WrestleMania pointed out that Reigns has lost clean in just six singles matches since his main roster debut in 2012, with his most recent clean singles loss happening over five years ago. In response, the WWE Universe were far from pleased with the statistic, with one saying Reigns is on Hogan's level for being the most overpushed star in history, while another simply said he was so annoying. Another question how anybody can think that Reigns needs another year as champion to be considered a top guy, considering how he has been pushed as a top guy for much of his career. Reigns is indeed booked strong, but his push has arguably come at the expense of others on the roster. And is he indeed the worst thing to happen to WWE, as one fan stated? Share your views in the comments. And we're ending today with Charlotte Flair, who, like Reigns, is no stranger to dominating in WWE. The Queen is WWE's most decorated female champion by a considerable margin, and has now revealed her goals outside of the squared circle. Speaking to Sam Dunn of Boardroom, Blair shared her plans to get to that next level, and named The Rock, John Cena, and Dave Bautista as wrestlers who have done just that. Charlotte also said that her father Ric Flair is another who has been able to make the transition from professional wrestler to entertainment figure, and Charlotte has already dipped her toe in non-wrestling entertainment, having appeared in 2017's Psych the Movie and 2021's Punky Brewster. 
During the recent WWE draft, Flair was selected by SmackDown, and while she hasn't appeared since her loss at WrestleMania 39, the Queen of All Eras has big plans, both in and out of the ring.